Hi, my name's Anna and I'm a member of the Lincoln University Dryland Pastures team. Today, just for convenience, we've decided to put Dick Lucas in a paddock as a measuring stick. So where he's standing at the moment, you'll see him in a ryegrass, dryland ryegrass pasture. Um, as you can notice, you can't see his shoes, but it's actually a fairly low pasture standing over there. It's drought stressed at the moment, um, although it's slightly green. and. Um, as he walks forward, you'll see the purpose of this video, which is a rather fortuitous leak in the irrigation pipes to the water troughs. So this is actually to just show you in the stock camp area around the trough, the difference, the level of fertility plus water will actually give you at the same time of the year. So as you can see, it's almost up to his knees at this stage. And as he migrates around, he's going to get through the fence into a <laughs> coxfoot pasture. And as he stands where he is at the present point in time, he's now in what is a dryland coxfoot pasture. Um, we'd be expecting under lower fertility situations that over the course of a year a low fertility coxfoot pasture would be doing maybe 7 to 10 kilogram uh, tonnes of dry matter per hectare per year. And again, he's moving into the area of our fortuitous water leak. And you can see that there's a distinct colour difference here with darker green leaves, higher dry matter production on offer. The other thing about Coxfoot is that it's actually less palatable to stock when it's nitrogen deficient. So the addition of nitrogen to Coxfoot actually increases their grazing preference into the, into the grass. And we've found in previous studies that the addition of water and nitrogen together can increase yields to those of a highly fertile irrigated ryegrass pasture of about 22 tonnes of dry matter per hectare per year in this environment. Whereas the comparison is if you have low fertility and you put water on, you'll only get about 10 tonnes of dry matter per hectare per year. So you more than double your yield if you've got both water and nitrogen available to the species. So here we've got unlimited nitrogen and good water supply. Probably this Coxford is growing at about 80 or 100 kilograms per hectare per day, whereas out in the, in the main paddock we'd be lucky if it's doing about 10 at the moment. Of course we're due to put the dry ewes into here to clean up this paddock and um, try and keep on top of the, the growth through the summer so that, uh, the, the, so the bare ground between the clumps of coxfoot can warm up a bit and soften the annual clover seed so that we get a good strike of, of balanza clover and sub clover when we get the autumn break. Let's hope it's in early March, late February.